format full of staples, insane combos, and gross stacks pieces. Bad at magic, that's us, are going to try and do the impossible. We're going to help create a guide to help you survive games of Commander. This is BAM's Declassified Commander Survival Guide. Results may vary. And speaking of results, did you know that Bad at Magic is available on most podcasting platforms like Spotify and Apple Podcasts? And if you are watching this on the ever so lovely YouTube and watching our beautiful faces, please make sure to leave a comment and give this video a like as that will give us results that we will love. As we alluded to last week, this is the Super Friends episode because mm -hmm. Phyrexia All Will Be One, is, well, this is pre-release weekend when we're recording it, so people are like way talking about the set. I made the statement last week that the set is secretly a Super Friends set on top of being an in-fact proliferate set. So it just made sense to do an episode like this because we're going to see a lot of Planeswalkers over the next like ever, basically. So it makes sense to figure out what those kinds of decks do, what makes them tick, and how to beat them. Because it can be frustrating to play against a, a Planeswalker deck. As you have like very well preached, they fundamentally change the way a game of Commander is played. Yes, a thousand percent. I think it's really funny that you said that this set is secretly a Super Friends set. I, in my narrow focus, am only viewing it as such. I'm like, wow, Toxic's here, and that's pretty neat. But this is, you get 10 new Planeswalkers in a set. That's not anything to ignore. And, like, how many Proliferate cards? Like A lot. A lot. Yeah. Red got its second Proliferate spell ever. Let's go. It's not yeah. good, <laughs> but it's the second printed one, so happy for me on that one i like the hard colors we got all will be one yep the gauntlet like there's just there's so many so many so many goodies for planeswalkers mm -hmm. that like rightfully so people are excited to play the archetype mm -hmm. for every person that's been excited to play the archetype i've seen like five people are just like oh my god I'm going to have to play against Planeswalker decks, aren't I? Like, yep. like just so begrudgingly. So I, as a person who who's recently, I would say recently within the past year, become very much enamored with the concept of Super Friends decks, they, I, they do change the way that you impact the game and that you interact with the game because it, there's like a secondary barrier. It's almost like people have two life totals, if I'm being completely honest. Um planeswalkers are very 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 important to your deck if you're going with a super friends deck you need those planeswalkers out so you have to take care of those planeswalkers and as somebody who has two planeswalker decks a third on the way you know i say that as if i'm with child but i have a third on the way um your life total is technically well at least in my opinion your, your life total is secondary so you you have to focus if you're playing against a super friends deck you have to focus on those planeswalkers and get rid of them because there's not a ton of recursion for planeswalkers if i'm being completely honest there's a couple pieces printed that are planeswalker specific a couple but... that i can think of are like backbreaking and game winning yeah but it's like eerie ultimatum and command the dread horde yeah so they're not gonna be too too common for you to see you need to get rid of them because i've been in games where i've literally begged people to take my life total down to like 10 as opposed to touching my planeswalkers because they are literally all when you're in a super friends deck, you're all in and it hurts when they're gone. But at the same time for as delicate of a strategy as it is, it's like one of the most powerful things that you can do in the format of course. on a casual side, like the casual end of the format, I would say planeswalker decks are like some of the most powerful magic that you can play because you can't interact with them the same because emblems stick around forever Yes. And because you're not playing those planeswalkers for the plus ones, the minus twos, you're playing them for the ultimates. You're playing them for the big ticket abilities. Yeah. I've had uh I've had people tell me when I first started playing magic, I would see a planeswalker, I would get very excited, I would want to put it in the deck, and I would say that ultimate is just too attractive, and they go, Well, you never play a planeswalker for their ultimate. In Super Friends decks, you typically tend to because it's not it's not, you know, un unfeasible for you to achieve that. If if not achieve it quickly when you have a lot of proliferate support you have a lot of double activations and those thresholds are pretty low yeah typically i mean i i'm also just thinking like how many counter doublers we have these days like Lots. one of the new praetors is literally a counter doubler like if you have vornclex in play 
your mm-hmm. planeswalkers are entering in with double loyalty. So you, they're yes. all ultimating like right away. Mm-hmm. Then you have uh, Tekuthal, which is the new blue Dominus that says if you proliferate, you would proliferate twice instead, which is also can be indestructible. That's pretty difficult to remove. And double oh, proliferation time. is kind of great. <laughs> I'm just thinking like the nightmare scenario of, you know, the attracts super friends deck, like the elephant in the room mm-hmm. that can run the counter doublers and the double pr- proliferator. So when you're proliferating, you're essentially double pr- proliferating. So if you have uh, Tekathal in play, you're quadruple proliferating every time you proliferate. Like that's insane. And when looking at the, the, the highest, uh, you know, commanders for Super Friends deck. A lot of them are very intimidating. You mentioned Atraxa, the first Atraxa. Um, I've been seeing a lot, especially on my LGS. I saw someone have a Prismatic Bridge, or well, an Esca God of the Tree, but they play it as Prismatic it's Bridge. Oh, yeah. Manic. It's amazing. 100%. You just get things. That's great. <laughs> I've seen a lot of Joda, the new Joda recently as well, because yes. every, every Planeswalker is two for one. Mm hmm. It's good. I mean, there's a there's a wide variety for planeswalkers. I just tend to choose uh, colors that are a little bit <laughs> a little bit less than stellar. I would say, or less than popular than most. Uh, I have red and it's, red and it's white. It's just a different brand. It definitely is, but it seems to be that blue is where a lot of the stronger pieces reside. We even talked last week about how there's a lot of like proliferate stuff in Absan, yeah. but like this set, the new Azuri is so good too. There's just a lot of really scary support that's being printed in the set, which I mean, I'm for one, you know, overjoyed about, but like, there's a lot going on with Planeswalker deck. And even in the past, we've had some Planeswalkers printed that can be activated on other people's turns, particularly to Fairy Master of Time is very intense, even with the fact that he has like 10 different printings. And I wish that was an exaggeration, but like 10 different printings in one set, the lowest printing is like five bucks. So it's still very pretty good for a planeswalker that can do multiple things. If I remember correctly, like that's a fairy too, because like, because of the nature of multiplayer magic, if it just lasts Mm -hmm. all the way around the table doing the plus ones, it gets to alt like basically immediately. Of course it can. And the alt is like, take two extra turns. Yeah. You get two extra turns. The one thing that I want to say about Planeswalkers and why they're so scary is that they are literally everything packed into one. Mm -hmm. They are removal. They are protection. They are ramp. They are token generation. They are card draw. I mean, like, you can do anything. I I feel like every every Planeswalker that people are compelled to run nowadays does two things. And And it's the two things that you probably want to be doing in a commander game anyways. Yeah, they're in here some to kick ass and eat bubblegum. <laughs> mm-hmm. They're all out of bubblegum. The only Planeswalker that I could think of that like does one thing and one thing only is Nissa, mm-hmm. who shakes the world. Yeah. But she just makes so much one. goddamn mana that like yes. it doesn't matter. Yeah. And with some of the new walkers we got in this set, they're I think they're getting even better. I think the new Kaya is phenomenal. She's, I love um, that new Kaya. She's enchantment removal. And you get a copy of that enchantment, mm-hmm. which I think is so beautiful. The new Nahiri is great because you can get um, something back from your graveyard, quote unquote, back for a hot minute. I think the new Eternal Wanderer is also beautiful. Like, there's just a lot of really good pieces that we're seeing strengthen the already strong archetype of super friends which i think is why people are so buzzing about this i remember twitter literally exploding when icker moon gauntlet was, was oh my previewed. gosh and w- rightfully so it it's amazing ordering for like 50 bucks as yes, a it rare. was yes it was and it's amazing and i love it and i'm excited but with that being said when you sort of like look at super friends deck there's just kind of like a lot going on there in terms of like not only the super friends but the supportive pieces itself like you you can't just run a bunch of planeswalkers and hope that you get them there there there's a lot going on there's a lot of inner machinations to these decks that i think people don't All right, uh, Patrick, understand yeah <laughs> let us know about those inner machinations, inner machinations of, your mind. of my mind are an enigma <laughs> But like playing against a Planeswalker deck is an enigma for a lot of people because you cannot play that game normally. No, you can't. There's a lot going on. You have to get rid of the walkers. That is what you have to do. Make make like the walking dead and and kill the walkers. (laughs) (laughs) 
because they are, there's so much abilities packed into one creature. A lot of times, especially me, super friends decks tend to lean heavily on their planeswalkers for those things that you would normally see people slot into their other decks. Again, I already said it like ramp removal protection there. I run significantly fewer creatures in my Kadric deck because I have a lot of planeswalkers that create tokens. I also have a lot of planeswalkers that are removal or protection. Like I have the Gideon that says, if you control a Gideon, you can't lose the game. That's a way for me to stall out. I have a lot of built in things to my planeswalkers. But if you get rid of them, I am struggling because everything else in that deck is just support. It's really rough. You're basically playing like a delicate combo deck at that point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that that tends to be like like from my experience, most Super Friends decks play out as like combo control. It's just Planeswalkers and Wraths the whole way through. Planeswalkers, Mm -hmm. Wraths and Ramp. And you'll figure out a win con later. Like you're inevitably going to ult some sort of backbreaking. Yes planeswalker or you're just gonna like get enough chandra awakened inferno emblems and burn out the table yeah like it's it's inevitable there's a lot of good pieces too that also amplify those pieces that would normally be a little bit less like yeah with the chandra awakened inferno emblems i think is a good example like yeah one to two damage every upkeep is like yeah it's a pain but it's not gonna kill you but if that starts to go up to three to four to five and suddenly Mm -hmm. you're getting three emblems per turn that's where I think things get a little bit more intense because the clock ticks and that planeswalker yeah. can't be countered by the way, which I no. love. <laughs> a lot of staples and like strategies and cards that you might run in a deck normally don't work mm. against planeswalkers. I love this so much because I like seeing the light from <laughs> the light leave people's <laughs> eyes when they try and swing at me swing at like my Chandra with like a goaded creature and I'm like uh 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 goad says player doesn't say planeswalker yeah <laughs> it's so great goad doesn't touch planeswalkers no. and I thrive off of that I mean that's like when I was looking at building a building a super friend deck that's like my head immediately went to let's play red the correct color of choice, by the way. I applaud you. I picked Esper <laughs> for what it's worth. Mm, I mean, uh, going easy with it, but you know, it's fine. Um, well, okay, I see, I see how it is. <laughs> but like your typical like staple removals, like most of your Wraths don't hit Planeswalkers. Like you have no, to look at Wraths that hit all sorts of different kinds of permanents. But mm-hmm. even the more popular ones these days, like Austere Command or Farewell, those don't hit Planeswalkers either. You need to look at like Ruinous Ultimatum or like Urza's Blast doesn't even do because they're legendary. Like Yeah, Urza's Ruinous Blast. I run that in Cadric because it says get yeah. uh, all non-legendary permanents. And I just all for me, myself. none for thee. That's, yeah, that's exactly. what that card it's says. It's delightful. In terms of Wrath, Ruinous Ultimatum is the only one that I can think of. And you have to be a Mardu specifically mm. for, for that one. There's a lot of good pieces to run to like prevent Planeswalkers from doing things. Imprisoned in the Moon, Song of the mm-hmm. Dryad. You can also do Shuffle Effects, Chaos Warp works, Oblation works, stuff like that. Anything that says permanent. I mean, what Generous Gift and Beast Within, you can also yeah, get Yeah, those of. work. The Devil works. Abrupt yeah. Decay works. Assassin's There's Trophy Assassin's works. Assassin's Trophy, there it is, yeah. A lot of this stuff is... Single target. Yeah, it's it's single target. Like, yeah. y- you, can't, you can counter the drip feed of Planeswalkers, but once they hit mm-hmm. like a critical mass... Yeah. Or just like have a ton of mana or recursion. Mm-hmm. It's really hard to, to yeah. beat a Planeswalker deck. And you also have to understand that with Planeswalker decks, protection is, again, very minimal. A lot of pieces that I've had people recommend to me on my deck building streams don't work the way you think they do. So mm-hmm. like Ghostly Prison and Propaganda, those two pieces are protections that don't work because you would think, oh, well, you, they won't attack me. That's true. They can't attack you. It doesn't say Planeswalker on Ghostly Prisoner Propaganda. The only pieces that actually say can't attack you or Planeswalker you control are Norn's Annex, Archangel of Ties, and Baird. And those are the only three pieces. That's it. And they're all white. But even then, like Baird and Archangel of Tides are conditional. Yeah. There's a big difference between one mana and two mana. And then Archangel of Tides Mm -hmm. only works half the time. You either have to give her vigilance or just not attack with her. Which can be kind of rough when you're trying to prevent your blockers from being smacked. You need you need blockers, but like at a certain point, you got to go on the offensive, and it it can be a little bit annoying. I mean, I like Luxior because Luxior is a double edged sword, in my opinion, pun intended. Oh my god, <laughs> it's the coolest card printed in the last few years, hands down. I agree. 
but it's I find I view it as a pseudo form of planeswalker protection in a sense. But again, it opens you up to a whole different ball game of of yes, removal, it though. It's not a planeswalker anymore, but it's a creature. It's a creature. And what kind of removal is the most common removal in commander? Creature. Creature. creature removal. Yeah. Because a lot of times people will be like, okay, I'll swing at your Chandra. And I'm like, well, you can't because now it has Luxior on it and it's a creature. So you technically can't swing at it. But that means it's more susceptible to, again, those pieces of removal that are way more common. So again, double-edged sword. I'll just sort to plowshares it instead. I'll path to exile yeah. it instead. Planeswalker decks have their 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 shortcomings for sure. But those strengths are so nice. Yeah. You see everything that that archetype is doing coming from a mile away. Yeah, I mean, it's literally printed plainly on the card. <laughs> it's just at the very bottom. Everything they do that's scary is sorcery speed, unless you have like a Teferi Temporal Archmage mm-hmm. emblem in play. Yeah, exactly. That is a reasonable win condition to activate every Planeswalker ability ever on every player's turn. It is. But until you get there, everything is sorcery speed. You're always responding, or you always have the ability to respond to everything that they do at all times. I suppose now that I've mentioned Teferi Temporal Archmage, we should just talk about like the big alarm bells. I love Because I, I think bells. this is the most important thing. Yes. The survival guide for Planeswalkers is like, Knowing what's important, knowing what to remove, knowing what to say, like, hey, we need to counter that. Or like, hey, we need yeah. to attack this Planeswalker specifically. Yes. And to whoever is listening to this podcast, if you play against me in the future, um, know you that You never heard I, any of this. You never... <laughs> if, if you see these come out under my battlefield, please don't touch them. I need these. <laughs> I'm holding up the Men in Black flash thing. Yeah, right the little now. flashbang thing. Mm-hmm. And then he goes, Orion's belt! Anyway, so (laughs) there's a lot of really hefty Planeswalker pieces that I just think absolutely are are beautiful. Um, And fun fact, I run every single one of these. (laughs) I have all but one of, sorry, I have all but two of these in my Planeswalker deck. They're just good. They're good. So let's talk about, in my opinion, let's talk about the most iconic piece in Chain Veil. It's just Chain Veil. Double Planeswalker activations. It's amazing. You cannot let this card sit on the board or resolve no. if you can help it. This card it. will win the game. It will. Because that that first little bit of text that says if they don't activate a Planeswalker ability, they take, what is it, two damage? Negligent. Negligent. Because typically they're not going to play it when they don't have Planeswalkers. And yeah, it's going to go down. And if they have enough mana, they're doing it immediately. So you again because there's planeswalkers that generate mana too so you can immediately like with chandra torture defiance just uptick you get two red all you need is two more mana and you're already there you know it's it's a lot easier to achieve than you would think i'm thinking like teferi temporal archmage teferi who slows the sun who literally have abilities to say this is now free and you can do this forever and ever and it's i mean it's beautiful it's great it's gluttonous but that's in my opinion if you're going to ignore any other piece on this list that would be the one I think that you should pay the most attention to is the chain rail. That's the combo card, I think, is the best way to put it. Yes. That is the card that will try to win the game on the spot or darn near. Mm-hmm. If you leave the chain veil and get rid of the planeswalkers, there's always another planeswalker. There's only one chain yeah. veil. If you're at enough mana to put down a chain veil and activate it, you are at enough mana to get a planeswalker. What the highest planeswalker is what Ugin at eight, Karn at seven. All the good Chandras are at like six. Nukaya is seven. There you go. I mean, you're already there. Moving down, I like to view these as sort of Chain Veil's little cousin, <laughs> which are Rings of Bright Hearth and the Peregrine Dynamo. I know Peregrine Dynamo is not as, in my opinion, terrifying as Rings of Bright Heart, but it's newer. It's new and exciting. But you can only do it once a turn, unless you have untap effects like mm-hmm. Teferi. That's true. With 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 Peregrine, you can only do that once. But with Rings, Rings is definitely repeatable. As long as you got mana, baby. Yep. Which, I mean, easy. Again, easy. It's only two mana for Rings. It's two mana. Mm-hmm. I mean, granted, you don't see it too often anymore. You see more Chain Veils. But Rings is really good to get that extra little bit of bump when you're activating one of the abilities. I like to do Rings, especially when I'm trying to create big scary tokens. I did last night Rings with Sarkon the Masterless so I could get an additional 4-4. Four, four. Because Sarkon, again, the more dragons you have, the more your stuff is protected. So it's this mm-hmm. weird sort of interesting thing. But Rings is really good to kind of maximize that one little loyalty that kind of puts you over the edge a little bit. 
Yeah, th Bit this is like the, the tempo, like your card advantage doubler or your removal doubler. Chances are, if you're at the point where you're like alting a Planeswalker, you will probably want to use Rings of Bright Hearth on it. But it's like, if you're at that point, you've probably got a Chain Veil going or some of these other cards that we're going to talk about going. It's just, yeah. this is just a good card that you can play on curve before you drop any other Planeswalker. Moving down, we have Arena Rector, which was a card. It took me, it took me a while to sell me on Arena Rector. How can I simply put it? Uh, mana cheat good. Mana cheat and tutor at the same time. Better. I remember seeing it at my LGS, at the judge promo at my LGS's uh, card case. And I think that's what talked me into running it was just because of the judge promo, which by the way, the judge promo I think is like 15 bucks, 20 bucks, which is not bad for a judge promo. So I snatched it up. The reason why I like Arena Rector so much is because it dies. You get a big planeswalker, like you said, but it, it doesn't go to hand. It goes straight to the battlefield. Mm -hmm. And that shines in Kadra because Kadrick says whenever a legendary enters the battlefield. So it's not a cast. It's just an ETB. So yep. you get a free copy of Karn Liberated. Free. Free. For, I love for it. Mana. You, like, you, you do pay mana into Kadrick. For one mana. One mana for Kadrick, but mana. like a oh, one mana Karn Liberate, that's basically free, you know? It's it's really good. I've used a Chandra's ability to kill my own Arena Rector because nobody was blocking it when I was swinging with it. So I, I mean, it's the, it myself, it's the but... Prisoner's Dilemma with Academy Rector uh, as well. Like, you do not want yeah. to give an opponent their best enchantment. Just like you don't want to give your opponent yeah. their best Planeswalker. You yeah. never. Just like Academy Rector is a reason not to wrath a board mm -hmm. when someone is playing big scary uh, enchantments, Arena Rector is a reason not to wrath a board the Planeswalker deck because A, you have wrathed the board you're not gonna and get, removed, you're not gonna get and removed the all, the, all the ways to <laughs> destroy the Planeswalkers and then they get their best Planeswalker. Like, it is disaster waiting to happen. Yeah, you just shot me to victory. Thank you, friend. And the next piece is uh, Contagion Clasp and Contagion Engine, which I think, in my opinion, have kind of fallen a little bit down in terms of alarm. I think they used to be very terrifying. I think now they're a little less so. I mean, um, Contagion Engine in itself is very expensive. I mean, honestly, I think we just have better options. There are. I mean, Ikramoon Gauntlet, I think, is a better is a better supplement for them. It's way cheaper. Mm -hmm. um, Contagion Clasp and Contagion Engine. I mean, Clasp is, is not so mana intensive, but Engine is intense. It's intense to activate. Yeah, the benefit's good, but it, it's it's more likely that you're going to be able to do a Chain Veil activation than, a, than mm -hmm. a Contagion Engine activation on the same turn it drops down. It's just, it's a lot. I mean, I would rather have Chain Veil over like any card I would want to have Planeswalkers in play. But like mm -hmm. if I'm choosing between the two, if I'm at that like hundredth slot on my deck and these are my two choices mm -hmm. for some reason, I'm picking Chain Veil every time. Mm -hmm. It's never going to get banned it in is. the format. It is. Ever. But I still ever, have a soft ever. spot. It's just very good. <laughs> it's just very good. Um, it's, it's very good in the specific sense. And mm -hmm. I mean... Again, Cosmic Engine, not as terrifying, but there there are new pieces in one that do amp up your proliferation or give you extra benefits off of your proliferation. Like, again, the new Tekuthal or even the new Venser or even the new Azuri. So they, I would still say keep an eye out for these depending on the colors your opponent is in. The color selection in here was very purposeful, and for that I appreciate it. Mm -hmm. number one Icar Moon gauntlet being blue i think is a good idea again because we talked about this last week with with uh with uh toxic we're seeing a lot of those abilities in abzan colors i would rather see Icar Moon in blue than in the abzan yeah. colors it just does not need that much support um so bless again also again that secondary ability with Icar Moon gauntlet doesn't say player so it doesn't do anything with poison counters on people again i love that but yeah all would be one being red made my heart sing yeah i appreciate that all be one is any kind of counter though so like you can play it in a plus like a plus one counter too. strategy it's not necessarily just a super friends card so i, I appreciate that they left it open ended. yeah that card will destroy you you will lose to that card oh of course you will especially when you have again like that newborn clex imagine that this paired with that newborn clex oh my god i love it i love it 
I love it. When, when a planeswalker enters the battlefield, they enter in with that number of loyalty, which is technically putting counters on something. So you are automatically, if you cast a planeswalker that has six loyalty, that's already six damage. Vornklax would make that deal 12. Like that's, um, that's ridiculous. I want to talk about one of my favorite Super Friends cards. Like, I don't, I don't know why this is one mm-hmm. of my favorites, but it just, it is. It's Oath of Teferi. I do like Oath of Teferi. This is like a whole category of you can activate your Planeswalkers twice without extra help. Uh, it'd be like Oath of Teferi and uh, the mm-hmm. third chapter of Urza Assembles the Titans, which is another newer card. I run both of these. I run Oath of Teferi in my Elminster deck, which is, by the way, disgusting. It's it's amazingly beautiful. Here's a thing that we didn't put on the list that is related to Oath of Teferi. I'm so sorry. Spark Double. Yeah, sure. Spark Double. You, you counter that. Counter that as, <laughs> as soon as you can. Because I have uh, Spark Double in my Elminster deck. I have now two Elminsters, and now I have four activations of one Planeswalker, thanks to that. Mm-hmm. And another thing I want to emphasize about Urza Symbols of Titans, that last ability you said, Chapter 3, gets you double activations of Planeswalkers. But you should also pay note to the first two abilities, too. Scry, you get a Planeswalker to your hand. Second ability, put a Planeswalker with mana value six or less onto the battlefield. So you just missed that Karn liberated Kaya area. But that's most Planeswalkers. And I really want to emphasize that something I didn't notice until I played it for the first time, or Assembles the Titans, has read ahead. So you can just do five mana, immediate go to double activation. You don't have mm-hmm. to do the first chapters if you don't want to. Five mana, double activation immediately, which I think is so good. Or five mana, get something free. So good. I'm raising my hand like I'm in class right now. Uh, with yeah, what's up? Assembles the Titans. There is so much proliferate right now. You can read ahead to get the Mm -hmm. Planeswalker into play, get a proliferate somewhere, and Mm -hmm. then activate everything double. Yeah, it's easy. I mean, it's, it's, it's laughably easy how a lot of these things, if you're in the right colors, you are, you are golden. You, you're really golden. And with Icar Moon Gauntlet, you are just, you're just getting there faster and faster and faster and faster with the proliferate pieces. I mean, even in colors that don't run a lot of proliferate, even in red, you can get there faster and faster and faster now. Just just with the set, which please don't ban anything from the set. <laughs> I don't think anything's going to get banned from the set, but please don't. I don't think anything I, – I, I hate to say it, and I think this is another thing that – I don't want to say cause for concern or alarm bells because it's literally not a cause for concern. It doesn't raise any alarm bells with me. Yeah. For the most mm-hmm. part, like basically any like good Planeswalker card or like Planeswalker support piece ever – it's not ban worthy. Mm-hmm. It's not even close to being ban worthy. Thank you, because they're not. They're so specific. A, they are specific. B, they're incredibly mana intensive, and there's mm-hmm. only there's only a select few ways that you can che- like cheat them into play or tutor them. Mm-hmm. Uh, so like only certain colors are able to do the most disgusting things. And unless you're yes. playing Atraxa and just getting all of the colors or playing Joda or Sissé mm-hmm. or whoever and getting all of the colors, you can't have your cake and eat it too unless you get like so incredibly greedy that you will be playing the most delicate deck at the table yeah. and running into problems. There's, with, we, we talked about this a little bit before we started recording, but uh, literally uh, almost every strong piece of Planeswalker Tutor comes in white. And even then... And well, not even then, because like there's also like cards that search for legendaries that are also white too, like search for glory, board the weather light. They they also technically can get you planeswalkers, but like they're also they're also in white. Um, and of course there are exceptions to the rule, but there's planeswalker mana cheat in white with deploy the gate watch. It's basically cocoa yes. for planeswalkers. I do have a deploy the gate watch in my Cadric deck, and it's super great. Although it does hurt when you whiff, but you know you gotta risk it for the biscuit on that one. That brings up this very interesting exercise thought experiment. If you had to say like what each color was good at for super friends, what Mm -hmm. would you say? White is definitely the best at creating bodies. It's creating support. In in my opinion, I, I for one very much appreciate that. That's why I run a lot of them in Kadric. Uh, You have like eternal wanderer, wandering emperor, Elspeth. They all make tokens to protect your walkers, which I really appreciate. Like you said too, they also just tutor everything very, very mm-hmm. well. Red is is good at just 
I mean, it's good at damage. It's good at damage. There's also some bits that are good at card draw too. And also weirdly supplemental token generation. Like um, a lot of the Chandra's I run do make elementals. I mean, they do get exiled, but they, you do get some attackers. Um, I run, I run Comet who can, who can make squirrel tokens. Blue definitely card draw. Artifact yeah. stuff, especially like artifact mm. synergies. Oh my god, yes, the Tezzerets. The Tezzerets, yes. There are a lot of Tezzerets that search artifacts into play. Like Tezzeret the mm -hmm. Seeker has enough loyalty yes. to immediately minus and get the Chain Veil into play, get Rings of Bright Hearth into play. If you know yep. that your opponent is like specifically playing a Planeswalker strategy with Tezzeret and just like Tezzeret in general, mm -hmm. if Tezzeret's just in an artifact strategy, they're grabbing a combo piece for sure. Like that's definitely yeah, one to keep an eye out for. Green is your favorite. Which is funny because my my super friend deck I'm building does not have green in it. Which surprises me. There's a lot of very good green walkers to choose from. Garrick, Nissa, Vivian. I was gonna say Tyvar, but there's only one green Tyvar. <laughs> yeah, the other Tyvar is Golgari. Vivian's a creature support piece for Planeswalker. She's not necessarily like a super friend's. Mm -hmm. Um, support piece except for Nissa who shakes the world because she is uh, essentially a mana doubler for yeah, all of your Nissa force the world and you're else. probably playing Yabamaya anyways so yep. all of your lands are going to be doubled like her mm -hmm. ultimate says all the lands are indestructible and you like just ramp a ton she enables the subsequent tomfoolery with chain veil after the fact you have the mana to support it and get it going normally that's not something that you think about. Kind of like how you mentioned, like you don't play a Planeswalker for the ultimate, whereas Super mm -hmm. Friends you do. Yes, you do. Super Friends, you play you play these different creatures, or you, sorry, these different Planeswalkers for double activations, for all that kind of stuff. It, it breaks the otherwise like just commonly accepted rule of thumbs mm -hmm. for everything in general, which I think is hilarious and terrifying and a lot of fun. Planeswalkers have, in my opinion, and I, I think this is also just kind of common in itself, Planeswalkers have definitely evolved since we've first seen mm -hmm. them pop up in Lorewind for sure in terms of their their flexibility, their abilities, what they are allowed and are not allowed to do, their strength. I mean, it's just it's just very interesting to see kind of the first Jace Bellerin to where we see now, which is Jace the Completed Mind, which is just this just incredible thread. If you just look at one of the first ones, if you look at the first Chandra Nalar to Awaken Inferno, it's like day and night mm -hmm. like middle school to college you're like whoa what happened you do like what two damage uh one thing and now chandra awaken and inferno is like deal three damage to everything that's not an elemental yeah oh and you get emblems every turn until you die mm -hmm. it's something it's really something and i i i for one i love it i also have to say like with that upscale power, I also very much appreciate the upscale in mana values. And I know that I was kind of like a little exasperated when I was talking about in my article, I wrote an article, exasperated about the certain mana values about like Kaya. But like Chi is so good. Mm -hmm. So of course, I really want, I really like to see increased pips and planeswalkers, increased mana values. I think that is I just want to see that in general for magic. I, th I think so too. It, it levels the playing field out. It limits what color decks she can go into. Um, which I greatly appreciate as someone who really likes to do a lot of multicolored things. You know, you want to, you don't want to let everybody have Kaya as a treat, you know, <laughs> you just mm -hmm. want to have specific deck have it as a treat. The day that that Kaya was shown was also the day that I realized a lot of these six, seven, eight mana planeswalkers mm -hmm. in a lot of cases, you're not actually paying six, seven or eight mana for I think that's something I don't even think it's a concern. There's a lot more broken things happening in the format than, ooh, they got to play their planeswalker a turn ahead. I think it's okay. I think it's a good thing that there's a variety of strong things that you can do in this format. Mm -hmm. I think that's really the moral of this of the the Super Friend story. Is like if this mm -hmm. wasn't a thing, like think about it this way. You'd still have a bunch of archetypes viable and like like super fun and super playable in the format, but it just feels like a huge piece of the format would be missing, and like people would genuinely miss super friends at their tables, like at their yeah. FNMs, everything like that, if it just wasn't a thing anymore. So for yeah. all the I don't I don't want to call it complaining, discourse, what have you, disdain. 
I think it's a really good thing that this sort of deck exists, is allowed to exist, continues to get support. I think that's really, really exciting. I mean, there are over, according to Scryfall, there are over 287 Planeswalkers printed. Think about it this way, though. It's not something that they started printing a lot until recently. Like, War of the Spark had 40 of those. All will be one has 10 of them. That's Yes, they like, did. That is 20% of all the Planeswalkers in two sets that have all come out in the last few years. I don't think this spells a huge shift for... Um, mm-hmm. For Planeswalkers, and I still think my my prediction for March of the Machine is that we're going to get that, like, no more mutants, no more Planeswalkers moment, where there's just going to be no more Planeswalkers anymore. Or we're going to see them, it's, like, once in a blue moon. Like, once a year, we're going to get one new Planeswalker spell. I think that that is potentially going to happen. I hope it doesn't, for the sake of all mm-hmm. the Super Friends fans out there, because that kind of just, like, cuts off the support for their deck. It can for sure, but like I, I, I had uh, I was on the the round table for um for all would be one where we did a charity stream, and I thought it'd be kind. Of, I kind of said I think it'd be kind of interesting to see if there was sort of like an avatar moment where like you know like they get their spark taken away or something for like mm-hmm. a little bit. I think that'd be interesting. Um, in in all honesty, though, this might be an unpopular opinion. If they halted Planeswalker support, I wouldn't be too mad. And the reason why I say that is because I am I am running out of slots in my deck. <laughs> I can't run so any more. All the, I, why can't I hold all of these cool Planeswalkers anymore? I'm literally struggling. Like, I just got the new Koth for my Chandra deck, and I'm like, where the heck am I going to put this? I already have 12 creatures. Coward. I might I actually might cut a land. <laughs> Because it's rough. It's rough out here in a planeswalker world. But all in all, I, I agree with you. I don't I think that might be something that they'll do, but I think our I, I don't, it. I think it'll but be I okay. think it, it'd be a bold possibility. Like if they really wanted to like change magic forever, which Maro has hinted at, like March the Machine will change magic forever. And I don't mm-hmm. think it's just because they're introducing a new type of card called battle. I think there is a fundamental, like, ground-shattering change coming to magic. Yeah. I definitely think that whatever they do, though, I think it'll be interesting to see and interesting to work around. Because there's, mm-hmm. there's always a workaround. There's always a workaround. I want to end asking us to do one, like, last exercise. Like, we did the what's each color okay. good at? Uh, okay. What is... I, I know the answer to this already. I'm, I think I know the answer to this already. You know, okay. oh, better yet, let's do it this way. You and I are going to guess each other's favorite Planeswalker. Oh, Jesus. Okay, well, I got to think. I know, I, I know this I love, is easier for me than it is easily. for you. Well, I mean, like, are you talking about a specific card or, like, character? Card. We're, we're, card? we're going off the deep end. We're, That's we're, we're getting hard. difficult. My- yeah mine change well okay well i i know you know mine dang it this is gonna be i know the realm in which you're on your journey you know the realm but you're on a journey you know you're ah, damn it okay you know i'm gonna guess i'm gonna guess i'm just gonna guess okay okay because this is gonna be way more difficult for you i'm gonna just say go with your gut it is the first thing that comes to your head nissa who shakes the world nope nope surprisingly my favorite planeswalker ever is mm-hmm. Elspeth Knight Errant. Okay, I can see that. When I first started playing Magic, just learning of Magic, the deck that I was handed was an Elspeth Knight Errant deck. It's just mm-hmm. always been so nostalgic for me. Plus, you have the new Secret Lair version, but the Mythic edition of Elspeth. Oh, it's is like beautiful. one of my favorite pieces of magic art ever. If I had like a true white whale of an artist proof, it's that mm-hmm. one. And you can't get it because Zach Stella works for wizards. Oh, that's right. Oh, because I was about to say, I have a signed Chandra that's Zach Stella. And I was like, oh, wait, not an artist proof. Signing is Never different. Than, and you're even lucky to have something signed. But yeah, my, my favorite crazy. is Elspeth Knight Errant by a long shot, which is why me telling you to cut. Elspeth Knight Errant from your Sissy deck was as heartbreaking oh, it as it was. It hurt. But it had to happen. It had, it to, had happen, to happen. But, but for different but it's, reasons. It's not, be- yeah. it's not because it wasn't a bad card or anything like that. It was, it was too good of a card. It because was she's too great. good. She's great. <laughs> yeah. Okay. 
what is mine? I mean, you already Chandra probably know Chandra Wigan Inferno. That is wrong. Is it, wrong. is it the anime Chandra? It's not anime Chandra. Wow. I thought you had it. I knew it was a Chandra, but there's 35 yeah, of, of these. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot. Chandra, fun fact, is the most printed planeswalker. Well, but I, I know that- it's not Chandra Roaring Flame, despite that technically being your commander for your Chandra deck. Correct. You're so oh, this is them all. this is interesting. I I would have thought that it'd be Awakened Inferno for sure. It is not. Awakened Inferno is my number two. I gotta go Torch of Defiance at that point. Then it it would be Torch of Defiance. Torch okay. of Defiance is my favorite Chandra. I mean that Magali art is so good, but like also. That's an example of a planeswalker that just does everything. It's card draw, it's it's ritual ramp, mm-hmm. it's damage, and then it's got a really cool, really cool yeah. ultimate. Emblem. It just it, it makes sense. It's the total package. Well, the reason why it's my favorite is I I too have a sentimental love for this card. Um, it was like my second or third pre-release. I was playing in the uh the Kaladesh pre-release. I was very excited and I had I really wanted to pull this card so bad. Everyone was talking about it. Everyone was literally talking about how it had four loyalty. And I was a new magic player, so I didn't know if that was good or not. I was like, she just looks really cool. I want her. Um, I pulled her in my pre-release kit. Um, and I won my pre-release. I won the entire pre-release. It was the first ever pre-release I ever won. I was a baby player. I was winging it. I did weird energy. I had all those unlicensed disintegrations and I had, you know, those weird rats with the energy and stuff. And I was like rocking and rolling with Chandra. I was killing it. And I won and it's ever, and she, she won me my first pre-release. So I have a very huge, uh, love for Chandra. Coincidentally, it was that same pre-release where my opponent told me that it was customary for, uh, the winner to split their prize packs with second place. And I did that because I was a baby magic player and I didn't know. So if you, if you're listening and you're the person who stole half my pre-release, uh, half my, <laughs> my pre-release bags, I hate you. I was Still so upset. Not gr- grudge for life grudge literally i know your name i'm not saying it though but i hate you (laughs) you stole i was a baby but i won with chandra and it was so exciting i appreciate that like we both just didn't pick like the best planeswalkers ever yours is a good card torture defiance is a very good card but we picked it for sentimental reasons rather than this card's just good i think that's what commander is all about anyways it's just like running your favorite cards so that it just it really it doesn't hurt that your favorite card doesn't suck. <laughs> sure. It doesn't yeah. hurt. Thank you so much for listening to this week's episode of Bad at Magic. If you don't know who I am, my name is Chase, also known as Mana Curves. I'm a Commander content creator, streaming paper commander, and deck building on my Twitch channel. And I also write articles about Commander for Star City Games. And I'm Eddie K. Plays Cards on all of the things. I work behind the scenes with most all of your favorite content creators these days. So if you're supporting other content creators, you're probably supporting me, and I really appreciate that. You can support this podcast by finding it on all of your favorite podcast platforms by hitting the subscribe button and leaving a comment on the YouTube, which, by the way, we're on YouTube. If you like seeing the cards pop up when we're talking about them, having a nice little visual aid is very helpful, especially for newer players or even just experienced players because there's like 23,000 cards in magic and having that extra little bit of help certainly makes a difference Uh, we certainly appreciate you guys listening to the episode every single week we love doing this and we are going to continue to do this and uh, if you are in philly for magic on philly come find us and we might have goodies for you 